Hello, my bird watching friends. Welcome to winter. It's snowing and it's pretty, and I like winter, and I like bird watching in the winter, but it does make me miss summer quite a bit. A nice thing about bird watching in the winter is sometimes you can see the birds a lot better, but it is quiet, and I really do miss those summer birds. So I thought I would go back and maybe listen to them again. It's nice to come out in the evening sometimes, and uh, sometimes you have different birds you'll hear. You hear that? That was the wood thrush. Yeah, right there. Oh, and that's a baby owl. I like the wood thrushes because they sound like little space aliens to me. Yep, that's, that's, that was it. So I came out in my yard because I can hear all the birds going crazy. It's because there's a barred owl up in our big oak tree. Let's see if I can uh, get it. So cool. Up in that tree is the barred owl. I know it's kind of dark. You probably can't see it, but you can hear all the birds going crazy. They're dive bombing it. Let's see if I can get closer. It might even be just a baby, poor thing. So I'm in my workroom, and it's night. Not quite night, kind of the evening, getting into night. And I'm doing some work, drawing some bird pictures, and I'm hearing owls outside in the woods. And I love that they keep me company. It's like a baby owl. It's, it's making this wheezy, screechy sound. I think it wants its parents to, you know, get it some lice. See if we can, can hear it. Here are those catbirds yelling to each other. I really like when birds keep me company at night. You know who else keeps me company? It's a little dragon, my little nighttime buddy. I like to have a night buddy. I'm out on my porch at night, and uh, there's owls. There's one really close. It's gonna make me to hear that. Isn't that spooky? I love that. So I thought we would draw an owl today because I really do miss those owls from the summer. I know they're still up there. They don't really migrate, but I don't hear them anymore because we sleep with the window shut. And in the summertime, I love to listen to them at night, you know, when I am not sleeping because I'm a bit of a nocturnal creature myself. So let's do an owl. And today I'm gonna mostly draw with markers just for visual impact, but I'm gonna start with a pencil, of course. Now, I'm going to draw my owl, and most owls have very large heads and large, fluffy bodies. Their feathers are super fluffy. They're soft, and they have kind of raggedy edges, and it, it helps make their flight very, very quiet. I'm drawing a great horned owl, even though it's not the owl I really see much around here. I think I hear them, but I never see them. The owl I usually see is called the barred owl, but the great horned owl can be seen almost everywhere in the country in virtually any habitat. So even though I hear them, it's not the one I see, but it's the one you are most likely to see. So all owls have very large eyes. I'm sure you might know this fact about them. They cannot move their eyes at all to turn around or to look at things, say, behind them. They have to, you know, kind of move their whole heads. Their eyes are fixed to stare straight ahead. They're going to have these really big eyes. And the great horned owl, it kind of, its feathers sort of come down in a point, so it, they, they kind of look like they're mad. So now I'm going to kind of sketch with this marker. These are not really ears. They're just kind of feathery tufts on the top of their head. They got kind of mad looking eyes. But these the pupils are, are big and dark to let a lot of light in when they go hunting at night. And their bills are very pointy. Very, very lethal weapon. They have this kind of 
line around the sides of their heads. They're, they're, it's called a facial disc. Their faces are very flat and they think it is to help channel sound into their ears. Their hearing is amazing. Owls are super, super adapted to hunt at night. And another cool thing about them is they have fuzzy feet. They think that is so when they catch rodents and snakes and things, if, if they bite them, if the animal bites the owl, it won't really hurt them. Now, most great horned owls are all sorts of brown, but I think most of them uh, have kind of reddish around their eyes. So I'm going to use this nice orangey marker so you can really see that its face is sort of a, a disc shape. It's white underneath their chins. So we're going to leave it kind of white there. Their plumage is very variable. That means they can be all different patterns of brown. Some are very dark, some are very light. I'm going to use this darker marker. But they all have kind of barring on their chests. And this is to make them look like camouflage so they can really hide. And another cool thing about them, they all have these beautiful golden eyes. So I could really have a good time, you know, coloring my owl in here, but I know we don't have a lot of time. So I'm just going to do a little more and then I'm going to show you that I already colored one in. And when you do your owl, you can, you know, do it all different kinds of colors of brown if you like. But this is how mine came out. So here I did my owl and I have it at night and it's making this beautiful, you know, hooting sound to, to keep you company in case you're up late. So hope you draw a good owl too. I just wanted to show you the great horned owl in my Sibley guide. Here is the range map for it. Pretty much everything in North America. And then I know it goes down into Mexico. You can really see them everywhere in virtually every habitat. But this is an owl that you're mostly just going to see at night. And that's why we don't see them very often. But uh, you should, you know, if you look it up on like the Cornell site, you'll hear that great hooting sound and maybe you'll hear it at night. So thanks for coming around and listening to me go on and on and on about owls. And thanks for drawing an owl with me. And I'm going to get used to being cold again. So uh, see you next time. Bye.